We recently had a guest request come through on Airbnb for one of our rentals that we have listed as a short-term rental. And something about this request just felt a little bit off. And so after a bunch of conversation back and forth with this particular potential guest, we eventually declined the request. And by doing that, it either cost us $1,750, which is the amount of this particular booking request, or it might have saved us a massive financial calamity. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through that scenario, how it played out, and hopefully it'll help you avoid a potential calamity yourself. Hey, welcome back to Living Off Rentals. I am excited to be doing my first video in my new little office nook that we had built into the farmhouse that we just finished rehabbing. We just moved into uh, about a week ago and this house was built in 1853. We gut rehabbed it and uh, I'm excited. Next week, I'm gonna be sharing the after video of what it looked like, you know, before and after showing the dramatic changes that have occurred here and some of the uh, details that we've put into this house. So uh, tune in next week for that. But in this video, I want to go through a scenario that occurred in our short term rental business recently. And I don't know, maybe we didn't do the right thing in this scenario. Maybe we didn't choose the right course of action, but I'm going to talk you through our thought process around it and the disaster that could have potentially occurred had we let this guest stay at our Airbnb property. And, you know, in this environment that we're in right now with the moratorium that's going on, basically the government said a year ago at this time, they said, you know, if, if a tenant stops paying, there's nothing you can do about it as a, as a landlord, you know, we're putting a moratorium on evictions. So, you know, there's people, there's, there's landlords who have been sitting on properties for over a year now and they can't do anything about it. They can't kick the tenant out who's, who hasn't paid in over a year. So they've been paying their bills as a landlord. Um, you know, the, the mortgage or the, the taxes and utilities or whatever they're responsible for, and they can't collect any rent and there's nothing they can do. And, and who knows how long this will last. They just keep extending this, this moratorium. So it's particularly important to be extremely cautious in this environment. So what does this have to do with short term rentals though? Well, I'm going to talk through this scenario and we can dive in and, and see how this could potentially impact your short term rentals as well. So let's dive right in and take a look at the booking request. So, it reads, hello, Taryn, our son has been hired by an electric company, which side note happens to be about 50 minutes away from the town where our property is located. He was hired today and has to report to work on Monday, 3721. So they sent this request uh, two days prior to that uh, on a Saturday and said he has to report to work on Monday. So he knows nothing of the area and desperately needs somewhere safe and secure without spending more than he is bringing in. Uh, we would like to know if you would accept $1,500 for the dates of 3-7-2021 to 4-11-2021. So at first glance, this seems like a pretty innocuous booking request. There's nothing that stands out as like, this is definitely an overt scam. But I do want to point out a few things. So just in terms of the listing itself, this is a duplex that we recently just fully rehabbed and we just recently listed on Airbnb. So we don't have a long history of reviews on it. Um, also, we're in the off season. So we're not booked up at 100% occupancy like we are during the summer months. They were wanting to book for the month of March, which, you know, is pretty attractive because, you know, in the off season, you get long weekends for the most part in, in our area. Um, so it's nice to have somebody in there, even though, you know, the, the booking amount through Airbnb would have been $2,533, even with the discount that Airbnb provides for a 30 day booking. Um, but if, you know, they were requesting $1,500 for those days. So it's still not a terrible amount, especially since long term, this individual unit probably would rent for 850, you know, so 1500 bucks in the off season isn't a bad deal, even though we could obviously negotiate with them. The second thing that, that stood out to me though, about this request is, you know, I recently had on, or actually it was the first podcast episode I ever did. I'm living off rental. So if you go back to episode number one, you can listen to it. But Mark Dennis came on. He's a former NFL player who turned to short-term rental 
uh, uh, host and he manages a whole bunch of short-term rentals. He's a really smart guy when it comes to short-term rentals and he, he provided some really great advice, but he mentioned, and it was sort of an offhand comment in that interview that I did, that he was talking about breaking up a party and he, he said something about if somebody is in the property for more than 30 days, all of a sudden they get these squatter or tenant rights. And I mean, that's something else to remember. With this business model, you're under 30 days stays. Yeah. And so they actually don't have tenant rights. Okay. Um, if, they're, if they're there against your wishes. And so now all of a sudden the moratorium impacts them because they're tenants. You know, before that, if you needed to get them out, you know, they're trespassing on your property. If they're not following the rules or whatever, you can you have uh, much more, um, uh, you, you have much better rights to get them out of the property. And so once I saw this request come through and I noticed it was just over the 30 day mark. And so that sort of set off alarm bells. Um, in addition to, this is a Saturday, they wanna get in there on Monday right away and it's like this big rush. And so um, just a few things that were kind of like odd. And so what? I, so my wife texted me once this came through, we kind of both monitor um, the requests that come through. And especially when there's an odd one, we have, we have somebody who helps us, you know, with all of the guest um, relationship and, and contact. But when there's one that's a little bit outside the norm, she, she messaged me and said, hey, did you look at this? What do you think? And so uh, I followed up with the, the, the guest and here's how I followed up. And I want you to think through before I get into this too, what would you have done? Like, would you have just accepted it or how would you have responded? Also, since this is such a long booking, we would need to meet your son at the property before we book before booking to do the walkthrough with him, run a full background check, a credit check, and an employment verification. I'm going to be over there on Sunday afternoon. So this was Saturday evening that they were sending this message. So I told them I'll be over there on Sunday afternoon tomorrow, basically around 2 p.m. Um, would that work for him? If he could also bring his driver's license as well and his employer's contact information, that would be great. Also, if you don't mind verifying your profile through Airbnb, which wasn't verified, Airbnb verifies profiles just by a person providing a copy of their ID and email and phone number, um, that would be great. Uh, also, where will your son be moving from? Thanks a lot, looking forward to meeting him. So. One thing I always recommend to new investors who want to get into short-term rentals and manage Airbnbs is that you really need to set up policies for yourself, you know, rules around what's an acceptable guest to stay at one of your properties. And for us, one of our rules is that we only rent to guests with previous positive reviews. Now there's exceptions to that. Sometimes we'll put, we'll allow a guest to put down a damage deposit in lieu of positive reviews. If you know, they meet certain criteria or, you know, there's uh, a certain situation, but for the most part, positive reviews keep us very safe because scammers can talk a big game. You know, they can be very convincing, but it's very difficult to manufacture positive reviews. So obviously this person didn't have previous positive reviews. So in this situation, if I have any doubts at all, I'm going to press on those doubts and test through extreme questioning just to see if they back off or they say, yeah, because if they're legit, they shouldn't have any issue with me running a background check or talking to their new employer. You know, they were just hired. Why would their new employer not want them to move over here and talk to their potential landlord? And why wouldn't they want to meet me face to face, look me in the eye and tell me, you know, what the, the situation is. So that's why I, I responded with so many questions, pressing them so much and letting them know this is going to be a very difficult situation for you if you're just trying to scam me. So let's see how they responded. So the potential guest says, I completely understand your concerns. My son will be traveling from Southern Illinois. He's starting a career as an electrical lineman apprentice. His father and I are paying up front for all his expenses. He's a great kid trying to get his career going. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any credit established. I appreciate your quick response, but we'll try another place. So I don't know, maybe this was a legit request, but 
you know, if it was, I would think they, they would have explained that, that he's young, just starting out, doesn't have established credit. You know, would you consider somebody without established, I never even said what the credit requirements were. I just said, I want to do a credit check. You know, I would think they would have said, We're, we'll still meet with you and look at the place and see if everything else checks out. Because obviously he wanted to move in Monday. So why wouldn't he be in the area on Sunday? So I, I you know, maybe it was legit, but, I think there's other hosts that, you know, probably will not be as as stringent. But the bottom line for me is I think you should always trust your instinct in especially in Airbnb hosting. A lot of times as a host, you start to develop this kind of spidey sense about, you know, issues that could occur. And I think it's really smart to to just test it. You know, we didn't say you can't stay there. We're happy to host you. But if I'm gonna let you in my property, I'm gonna make sure I'm checking all the boxes. And so be extremely thorough. And I just wanna follow that up with, if, if you're new to this, this could you know be a little bit scary and seem like, whoa, that's the type of booking request you get. This is very rare. The vast majority of people who stay in our properties are excellent, a lot of, a lot of them are families with kids. And, and we absolutely love doing this because we get such positive feedback and people are thanking us for providing such a great place and they share their experiences on their vacation. So it's rare that this happens, but I would say it's really smart. If you want to turn this into a business and have this be sustainable long-term, it's really smart to pay attention to things that might seem a little bit off and make sure you press on those things and test those things prior to letting somebody stay in your property. So hopefully this has really given you some food for thought. If it has, give this video a thumbs up right below the video. Also, as of the date of release next Thursday, um, I will have done a Facebook Live on Wednesday, the day before this is being released, on how I do Airbnb, why I'm doing Airbnbs, why this is one of the most profitable strategies that I've ever seen when it comes to real estate investing. And, you know, I share some of my numbers. And so I, I, I'm doing that Facebook Live next Wednesday, which will be the day before this is released. It's kind of meta. But um, if you want to check that out, you can check out the recording on the Living Off Rentals Facebook group. So go to the group, the Living Off Rentals Facebook group. You can join the group. There's a lot of great investors in that group. And you can watch the recording of the live that I will have done yesterday. I hope to see you in the Living Off Rentals Facebook group, but if not, I'll see you in the next video.